Hello, I'm Kelly and welcome to my Floss Tube channel, Animal Instinct. It's the 1st of May 2022 and I'm back with another cross-stitching update today. Thanks so much for coming by and spending some time with me. I hope that you're all well and getting in plenty of good stitching time or just doing things that you enjoy. Uh, I've got plenty to go through today. I have some notes just down here. <laughs> um, I have a fully finished object, which is very unusual for me. I have a couple of finishes and I have some works in progress, some haul and some plans. So let's just jump straight in. Um, my fully finished object. So if you follow me on Instagram, I should have had my thingy on the screen, um, animal stitches. Um, you probably have seen this, but I finished off my having trouble naming it. 2020 Be Well and Stitch themed cross stitch quilt. Now that is a mouthful and as an Aussie I object to it being so long we like to shorten everything so if you've got a better shorter name for me let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah let's just show now I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it in shot. Hang on a second. Chair scraping. Oh god. <laughs> I think that's about in shot. I can't really see now. That's the front. And a quick look at the back. Really, really pretty fabric on the back. Let me come back in. So this quilt, I, I'm not sure what you saw and I've just realized I don't have my glasses on today. <laughs> That's why I couldn't see the <laughs> display. Anyway, we'll just carry on. Uh, this has got just over 30 individual cross stitch pieces that I stitched in 2020. I have shown this in part before. So if you've seen my videos before, you might've seen it. Um, there's lots and lots. I'm not going to go into great detail today. Uh, let me just come here. Just to give you a bit of an idea. Uh, and yes, yeah, so I finally finished it um, completely. So I, uh, I think last time I shared it, I had pinned the three layers together, so the front, the wadding and the back, and then I got nice and brave on Good Friday. My mum came over and we had a crafting day and I did all of the machine quilting. And then I went on to do the binding as well. So it's completely finished. Um, very, very happy with the result. And it's a really nice keepsake um, for, you know, to look back and in future years, look back and remember what uh, happened during 2020. Um, I plan to do a Floss Tube kind of like a special edition video to share, um, like going to detail and show each of the stitched pieces and everything like that. I was hoping to do that last weekend, but my laptop suddenly and very unexpectedly died on me, which was not good. <laughs> um, anyway, that's all fixed now. So, well fixed, I had to buy a new one. Um, so I'm hoping maybe I can do the special edition, um, just sort of showcasing this piece, uh, next weekend. So if you're interested, keep an eye out for that, but I'm really happy to have, uh, finally finished this one off. Okay. I have another exciting finish. It's not fully finished. I finished, and again, if you follow me on Instagram, you know what I'm going to say, and you're probably um, sick of seeing him, although I don't think I could ever get sick of seeing him. <laughs> I finished The Witcher by Needleminder Lair, so you can get this pattern on Etsy at Needleminder Lair. Um, I started him on the 28th of November last year, um, finished on the 24th of April, 
before I picked him up, so I picked it up again the end of March. Um, before then, I'd only stitched on it for three days. Um, and then just like loved working on it and I couldn't put it down. So I just carried on through April, pretty much just stitching on that piece. So I'll pop a montage in of um, progress over the last month. Um, it's 90, sorry, 29,000 stitches in total. And I think hopefully now I can just show you the finished product. I'll just leave him there for a bit so you can admire him. So he's not large. <laughs> I guess that gives you an idea. He's very handsome. So he's stitched on 25 count cream Lagana, one over one full cross. There are 30 colors in this piece. And like I said, 29,000 stitches altogether and 34 stitching days I worked on him, which this is a bit crazy. I don't know how I did this and I could never do this again, I don't think. Um, that equates to an average of 850 stitches per day, <laughs> which is, I don't know how I did that. <laughs> um, so that was anywhere for, I stitched anywhere from 200 stitches in a day to 2000. And the very last day I was so determined to finish him off and I did, uh, it was 2300 odd stitches to finish. And I actually finished, it was kind of in here. So I was basically stitching cream on cream quite late at night with tired eyes and I don't recommend that. <laughs> now I wasn't racing to get him done. Um, I'm quite particular and I like my stitches to sit neatly. So I wasn't rushing. I just, I don't know, I just couldn't stop. Anyway, um, yeah, so really happy with that. Um, even though he's little, I think I'm gonna get him framed um, professionally because He's just so cool. I've had him sitting um, oh, propped up on my bookcase over there so I can, my stitching spot is behind me so I can just look up and there he is, you know, gazing over me. <laughs> anyway, that's a really great pattern, really nicely charted, amazing that it's only got 30 colors. And um, yeah, it's a bit sad that it's all over. Okay, next I had another little start and finish. Um, I'm working on the Hugo Stories uh, series. It's, there's a piece per month. It's by New Leaf Craft on Etsy. Don't think you can get them at the moment. Um, I'm kind of roughly trying to do one of these a month this year. Um, and I started the so I'm doing them kind of aligned with our seasons. Um, so it is month, the month called September. Yeah, but we are in, but it's like an autumn sort of theme and we're in autumn at the moment. So here it's this one. It's very cute. So it's on 28 count. Brittany Lugana, and it's by Chromatic Alchemy, and the colorway is Aether, A-E-T-H-E-R. Um, I guess just to quickly show you, <laughs> I'm going to finish these. They're not all going to be finished on the same piece of fabric, so it doesn't really matter, but I haven't spaced them out very well. <laughs> kind of a little bit all over the shop. But I'll be able to fit all 12 on this piece, no problem. Um, and I'll just come back into that one. Because again, I think I mentioned this last time, it's only a small pattern, but it's really detailed. <laughs> so the pattern is 40 by 40 stitches. Okay. As you can see, there's the squirrel 
um, up the tree and there's a hedgehog and he's snuffling through a basket of mushrooms. Now, 40 by 40, only small. There were 18 different colors where I had to do full crosses, two over two. Six blended cross stitches. Seven two-stranded half stitches and five one-stranded half stitch. There were four different colors for the back stitching and two of those colors used both single and double strands. And there is a single French knot for the hedgehog's nose. But the effect it gives is pretty cool. So this is the foreground. This tree trunk is stitched two over two full crosses. This is kind of like just behind the hedgehog. This tree is two over, uh, sorry, two strands of half stitches. So it's slightly less dense. And then there's actually um, behind in the background, there's more trees, which is stitched with one strand of half stitch. So it gives it kind of that 3D effect. It's really cool. So that was a little sneaky start and finish. Um, and I'll just keep, keep working on those this year. Um, next is I have some works in progress. So just two. First one is a crowd favorite and one of my favorites too. Um, it is Firefly, artwork by Jenny Parks. It's a Gecko Rouge kit. It's my largest project by far. <laughs> it is 1,065 stitches wide by 700 high, so it's close enough to three quarters of a million stitches. I haven't touched it in three months. I was really surprised it's been that long. So it's been really nice to pull that out again this week. Um, this is what I've been doing. Oh God, so much fabric. <laughs> so, <laughs> doesn't look like a whole lot here. I'm at the very top of the piece and this is some um, background sort of night sky in space. So there's a few dominant colors and then all the little holes you can see I'm starting to fill them in but they are um, like the stars and those stars are little confetti bombs <laughs> there's yep one color here one color there it's yep hard work and it's a bit hard the way I'm stitching it at the moment but I have also come down and I'm working on this cat his name is Simon um, so at the moment I'm filling in his ear here. When I get that done, I'm going to start working my way across in sort of rough rows like I did when I worked on the other cat last year. I prefer cross country, but um, cross country like this can be a bit overwhelming when there's lots of holes left <laughs> everywhere to fill in. So I liked doing the, the strips. So, you know, like I'll focus on, I guess, you know, getting all of the stitches in there done. I won't have an abrupt line here though. I will go down underneath. So there's no risk of any weird lines appearing. Um, and I think you'll be able to see him better uh, when there's more stitched. So this is on 25 count Lugana. The cats are all one over one full cross. Um, I guess I haven't really explained. If you haven't seen my videos before, um, this is based, this is Jenny Parks um, converts popular characters into cats. That's just her thing. And this is based on the TV show Firefly. Um, so you can sort of like, this is, this cat's called Simon. <laughs> the other cat I've stitched was um, the captain, Malcolm, Mal. Um, yeah. So I found, I'm stitching for, for like an hour in the mornings before work when I don't have to go into the office. And this is really good to do at that time of day. Just put some music on and just stitch away. So yeah, so cats are full cross, one over one full cross. There's two or three colors that are by far the dominant colors in the background. I'm doing those as two over one half stitches. 
um, in the same direction as the top leg of my crosses. And then I've realized with the confetti stars, like that one there, there's, I think there's 12 different colors and maybe 14 different stitches or something like that. <laughs> so when you're using two strands, it can get a bit bulky when you're tying off at the back. Um, you know, twice as bulky as if you're using one. And in areas of confetti, that's even more pronounced. So with the confetti bits, I will do just one of one full crosses. Um, and I, I've been sort of experimenting, I wasn't sure, um, but it's fine, you can't tell. You cannot tell, even like up close, it's really hard to tell what's a half stitch and what's a full cross. Um, you can see there's like a, like a dark maroon throughout the blue too, so you get this sort of sparkly effect. So that's that now. Oh, will I take the, oh, I'll just take the key snap off. Here's a treat. <laughs> I'll show you where the whole thing, the whole thing's looking like. Okay, now it is going to be really creased, but that's okay. Oh, again, I might need to stand up for this. <laughs> okay. Yes, I do. Okay, excuse the chair. Gosh. Right. So that is the bottom of the piece and the top of the piece. And it's large. Like <laughs> it's huge. And I'll come in, just especially for people who haven't seen this one before, but and also just for a reminder, because he's pretty awesome. There is the captain. And I'd done like most of his face last year, and then I pretty much stitched his entire sort of neck down last year. Then I started doing some of the background, with kind of like a smoky look behind him behind them before you get into the space. And then I carefully stitched up, you can see that line, carefully counted up um, because I realized I really wanted to start doing more background. I don't want to leave that all till the end and have started on Simon here. So I'm going to carry on um, yeah, carry on, especially in the mornings, and just try and keep chipping away at this one. Um, for some stats on this one, I have, I'm really close to 100,000 stitches actually. I've done 98,273. So I'll hit 100,000 this, this week probably, or maybe. Um, but out of the total stitches, it's only 13.1% done a bit sad and I've got Pattern Keeper here this is the app I use to do my especially my full coverage stitching highly recommend it only on Android that gives you an idea of how much I still have to go <laughs> I'd really like to do a focus month on Firefly like I did last year um, I'll see how I'm going after May uh, I'm not sure when I'll fit that in but yeah I really need to get cracking <laughs> Okay, I have one more work in progress, and that is Under the Sea by Doreen Jones. Um, it was a stitch along from Lakeside Needlecraft, and you can still buy the pattern as a PDF. That's what I got. Um, and I think you can still buy a kit um, from Lakeside Needlecraft. Um, it's very cute. Doing this along with Emma X Stitching and Joe Belushi Stitches. And we are roughly trying to do one of the large motifs every month. So this is April, the submarine. And I'm behind. I'll blame, I'll blame the Witcher. <laughs> I'll blame Geralt. This is where I am. Kind of looks like a weird, creepy, um, 
I don't know. Some sort of character from a game? I don't know. <laughs> it looks like it's got big eyes and a big mouth at the moment. I love it. <laughs> so it's on 32 count Murano, um, Opal Murano. You see the glitter. Um, and it's Caribbean Seas from Jody Redesigns. Stitching at two over two using the called for DMC. So need to get cracking on the submarine. And then what's next month? Oh, cool. So in May, we'll come back over here to the seahorses. Uh, now, actually, I just wanted to thank um, everyone who commented I was talking about this horrible <laughs> dual effects thread that's called for in this one. It's, um, metallic it, it gives an outstanding effect when it's stitched but the actual stitching is not fun um, so especially to Holly and to Marion Anthony thank you so much you both had the same suggestion and I'm going to give it a go uh, so you do need to stitch this with on my the fabric I'm using anyway with two strands um, but they suggested just um, threading one strand on the needle and stitching everything twice and apparently that is a bit a bit um, easier to work with so I'm going to give that a go. I don't think it's coming up in May, but I think the next month it'll be back. So I will report back. <laughs> um, yeah, need to finish. Need to finish that submarine off. <laughs> okay, so that's all my stitching for April. Um, quite a lot of stitching just on a few projects. Now I have a little bit of haul, which this year is a bit odd for me. Anyway. I have, I decided to get a skein of, sorry, a skein, a hank of silk from Silks For You. Um, and I got, so I decided um, to get some black silk. This is for a plan to start later this year. Isn't it pretty? It's like a, it's, it is black, but it's kind of got a bit of a shine to it. I don't know. It's really nice. Um, so it's PR070. Um, and so yeah, so that's for that's for a plan to start later this year. That is the details. I included a little cute cabochon needle winder. I love their silk. It's a slight addiction. <laughs> uh, then I got some fabric as well. So I got this from number 12 Stitch Co, Nicola. This is her details. You can find her on Etsy. This is also, well, it's for a particular project. I don't know when I'm gonna start it. <laughs> um, I received the pattern Lo and behold, one of the long dog sampler patterns for my birthday earlier this year. And while I really have no business starting another one, um, I was thinking about what sort of combination of fabric and um, thread I would use. And I got in my mind that um, the red dirt in Central Australia would be a really nice background. I think all my other long dogs are on like plain fabrics with coloured thread. And I thought I might swap that around and do a coloured fabric with a plainish thread. Um, so yeah, I had in my, in my mind, the red dirt of Central Australia I used to live there and it's very striking and yeah, it's absolutely stunning. Um, so I found this glorious piece that's showing up pretty well. Um, it's called Autumn Harvest and I got it in 40 count linen. So beautiful. Now in my mind, I was thinking I'd stitch it on using either a white or a cream. I have a bit of a, have a silks for you that's kind of a variegated cream, cream color. Um, I haven't sort of put it against the fabric. Then one of my friends suggested black. So that could also work. I'll think about that. <laughs> That's for down the track, but isn't that a, an amazing colour? Like terracotta. And honestly, that, that is the colour you see in Central Australia. 
Now you can't just buy one piece of fabric. So I got a piece of 32 count linen in bull dust. And this is just a good all round color. I don't have anything in mind um, for it, but it's just a great, a great color that could work for lots of things. And I just realized the name. That's funny because I didn't make this connection when I bought them. So this is bull dust. Is bull dust an Australian term or is it used elsewhere? If you don't know what bull dust is, it's this really fine um, dirt. It's really dangerous. So in, you know, central Australia, in the outback, a lot of roads aren't sealed, not just the outback, just in the country. Um, a lot of roads aren't sealed, so they're just hard dirt roads and they get like divots and holes and stuff from rain and all sorts of things. And then they fill up with this fine sand. It's the same color as the hard packed um, dirt. Well, yeah. Um, and then, so you might be driving along and the road looks sort of flat, but there might be a big hole. It's just full of fine sand. So you can, um, your vehicle can fall into it. It's really, really dangerous. Um, so bull dust. Anyway, I thought that was a really, that's a, that's a great name for a fabric and autumn harvest. They are together. Thank you, Nicola. Um, and then one more bit of haul. It's like, what's going on? I've been just <laughs> madly stitching on one piece and just buying stuff. I bought a needle minder from Zane at Ginger Stitch AU. There's his details. And I got that cute jellyfish. And he's also started making, um, oh, what's he calling them? Floss drops. Um, I like using, so I have a lot of my floss on bobbins, but for all my kits, I have them on the, the cards and I prefer working with them that way. Um, so I thought I would get these. There you go. So these are his Monstera range. I can't speak Monstera. It's in the plant. I must have been in a green mood. Look. <laughs> green and green. Anyway. Oh, I've got to get the right angle. Hang on. There we go. So they're really nicely made. They come with the ring. I'll pop a sticker on the back with the DMC number or whatever it, is, whatever it is I'm using. And there's, I think there's 10 there. So really neat. And he's got some really cool um, designs. He was great to work with, uh, to, yeah, work with, I guess. Um, really, really good customer service. So I'm really looking forward to meeting him in a few weeks and that will come into plans, which is coming up right now. So plans for May, Mark, May? <laughs> oh dear, May, plans for May. Uh, I am actually leaving my state for the first time in two and a half years, not once, but twice in May. So <laughs> it's gonna be an interesting month. Um, most exciting is the Vic Stitches retreat in Marutna, Victoria. Um, so we're we flying to Melbourne, meeting some, some friends in Melbourne, then we're going to be driving up to Marutna, um, staying in a house, and then there's the, a big retreat planned Oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. Um, so excited to catch up with old friends and and I'll obviously make new ones too. So if you're going to Vic Stitches, let me know in the comments. And if we haven't met before, definitely make sure you come up and say hello. Oh, I, I can't wait. <laughs> it's going to be fantastic. And Zane from Ginger Stitch AU is going to be one of the vendors there. Um, and ah, oh, it's just going to be it's going to be fantastic to stitch in person with people again. <laughs> So that's happening and I've also have a work trip away as well. So I had thought about doing mania, but I think it, I'm just a little bit too busy for that. But I have made some plan or some goals, I guess, um, for May. So I thought I'd quickly run through those. Um, number one, Time Traveller by Joan Elliott. I showed this last time and I'm so close to finishing it, but when I, when I picked up The Witcher, 
I haven't touched this <laughs> since. <laughs> so all it needs is a bit of back stitching and a fair amount of beads. And I decided to um, make some amendments to the eyes as they're charted. So this is where she is at right now. So I would love to finish her in May. Come in. I'm going to try and put some colour in those eyes. Um, and yeah, so that's goal number one. I'm probably being far too ambitious, but anyway. Next is, I was looking at, I've got like a list of projects I'm focusing on this year and I was looking at what next is sort of closest to a finish. Um, they're all pretty big pieces, so nothing is that close. But I think Bushland Quaker by Mojo Stitches. I think that's um, a possibility. This is where I am at. Excuse the creases on this one. It's been folded up. So, I mean, got a fair way to go. But I looked at the stitch count and I think it's doable. So pretty. Love the Australian themed pieces. That um that beautiful series that everyone's stitching at the moment, Cottage oh, like, <laughs> I think I meant to blank, Cottage Garden Samplings, is that right? With the with the um everyone's doing the fox and bear and the ferret. I would love to see, just put in call out, I would love to see an Aussie version of something like that. You could have really fun fauna um, you could have bilby you'd have a wombat you could have an emu or a cassowary um, like really interesting stuff not and obviously you'd need to probably need a koala and maybe like maybe a wallaby you could do a possum there, there's so many um there's so many interesting animals that we have here and i just wish i was creative enough to you know be able to make something like that but um yeah it's not gonna happen <laughs> but i yeah i'd love to stitch more aussie aussie themed stuff uh what else so also for may i am going to get up to date with this one under the sea um i want to start and finish another huga story so the september no october one it's got a pumpkin on it i guess it's yeah it's the autumn theme for the northern hemisphere <laughs> uh, and I want to carry on with Firefly so fairly lofty goals for May especially with two trips away but <laughs> that's all right we'll give it a, we'll give it a go um, I'm going to try and come back next week uh, to share my quilt um, in, in more detail and yeah otherwise um, I hope you get plenty of stitching in and stay well and we'll see you again next time